Well, hello, everybody. We are here um, live in Frankfurt. Um, Frankfurt am Main. And we are at a, which is, I've never been to such a place. It's a wine bank. Um, behind this camera, there is a vault and you have, um, um, you have like cupboards, you have, which you can lock and you store your wine into it and caviar or other fun things that need to be stored. There was one unicorn which we discovered. There, we, we, and we discovered <laughs> one unicorn. And we have one guest. Yes. Marcus Eulich. Yeah. Uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, how would you describe your very uh, diversified career, let's say? Okay. Um, let's say, first of all, lost in Berlin is something that I adjust to immediately because I was once lost in Berlin in the 70s long time ago so i have a uh, i have deep feelings uh, regarding berlin especially east berlin where they put me in prison they did uh, not they did yeah. oh god okay yeah but because they didn't like guys like me from the west who are <laughs> doing <laughs> things that you're not supposed to do anyway so um no what i did um i studied a lot and then i thought it's good to go into business but then 20 years ago my office kind of disappeared because i was in the world trade center and then I decided, okay, from now on, I'll just do the things that I like to do, which is writing some books. Here, my latest books. Check it out on yeah. Amazon.com. Yes. Or the latest song, type in on your YouTube account, <laughs> Marcus and Eierlicke. I will which, actually play it at the end of the podcast. So okay. people can yes, we, we will we'll link yeah, it to yeah. it. It's wonderful. Or go yeah. on YouTube and uh, look at the video. Um, this was all done during the pandemic because um, I wrote the book because... I live from meeting people and trying to find a wavelength. Mm -hmm. So it's called 42 Begegnung, 24, uh, 42 Encounters. Mm -hmm. 42 is a magic number. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's the answer it's, to everything. It's the meaning to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the meaning to life. <laughs> Why? But now you guys have to explain me that. I didn't know that. It's a Hitchhiker's uh, Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. You haven't oh, seen it? No, that's the one I haven't seen because yeah. everybody talked about it. There. <laughs> okay, good. No, I they were feeding a computer for many years to find an asset what is the meaning to life. Yeah. And the thing calculated for a couple of years and then came out with the answer. And the answer was 42. <laughs> Very and, good. And so this is the reason, hey, this is the meaning of life, meeting other people. And because my, yeah. my life was a little bit obscure because not very normal compared mm -hmm. to others. So I went to eight schools, four universities, lived in uh, 16 different countries, worked in 16 different countries. So I think there's a little bit of, you have to be culturally open, yeah, mm -hmm. wherever you go. Yes, so you do. This yeah. describes yeah. my life. And um, this is why we sit here. You came over to go to the book fair. Yes, yes. The book fair. Yeah. yeah, and the book fair is always an amazing place because you meet very different people. My first time at this book fair, I was really astonished. I didn't know it was that big. I know the Berlinale, obviously, and, I, and I've been to Cannes. I've been to the film markets, but I have never been to the Frankfurt book fair, and it blew my mind. And I, I mean, any ideas? There's 20,000, 10,000 people that are oh, coming more, there. More, more, it, more. Un unbelievable. It was packed today. Uh, so for those, uh, you, uh, all of you watching, uh, we are working on a special that we will put out probably sometime soon with this interview as well. So um, we went there today and it was packed. Like we did the first shot in front of it. Still like a couple of people. And then by two, everybody was streaming in. And it was Thousands of and It people. took us 45 minutes to get in and we had tickets already. So just standing in line to get in. So this is a great meeting place here for Frankfurt. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we did, we met uh, at a gallery opening yeah. in a Venizage. Yeah, Ankalina. Uh, Ankalina Dalem. Yeah. Who we hopefully also going to um, feature on our show. And Ankalina said the fun thing, said, Tim, you have to, you have to meet someone who's a, as crazy as you are. A little bit as crazy. I went to 11 schools, by the way. 11 schools. So okay. I beat you with that one. Okay. At two universities. But um, so we met over, over writing because what he did then, so we talked that evening. It was a great evening. And then he said, I got a screenplay I want to send you. I read that. And it was, and I told you the praises already. I loved it. I loved it. It was a love story. But you don't meet too many people that write love stories. And he yeah, it's the, fallen out of favor. It's an absolute Ro love, love never falls out of favor. I oh, mean, yeah. you. it's universal. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. No, um, for, for me, the when I, when I wrote the song and when I uh, have written my book, 
from my point of view, the attention span that people have nowadays with the mobile phones, yeah, yeah, they are lacking of communication skills. So yeah. everybody is in the streetcar or wherever, and they're looking on their mobile phones, but they should look in the eyes and yes. of the people. And you know, you always. I mean, if you go to the book fair. You met a lady from Boston who came all the way to yes. Frankfurt to, yes. to check out. You know, this is what is life's yeah. about. Yeah. It's not about getting a message, oh, the weather is shitty in Chicago. No. It doesn't give you any, you know, say, no. okay, I'm not in Chicago, so who cares? Yeah. yeah. And no, and I think um, I've done this. I've done it actually for my children. I've done it for my parents that they have. Uh, and my mother was very helpful because she found a lot of old pictures for me. So I'm in there <laughs> and I look very strange sometimes, you know. Now in the in the days we all had middle title, you know, yeah. Was, yeah, and long hair, and we looked. Yeah, seventies were different from the eighties. Eighties were different from the nineties. So yeah, and this span goes from nineteen sixty two until today. So we have forty two yeah. stories of my life. Fantastic. Yeah. So, Fantastic. Um, what what I was gonna ask is, uh, you talked uh, a little bit about that before. Um, the the turning point in your in your career where you decided, okay. I'm just gonna do uh, whatever I want to do. Um, tell us about more more about that because you actually you worked as a journalist, right? Yes, I worked for a big newswire at the time, and uh, my headquarter was in the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. And the day it happened, I was lucky. I was in the um, I was in Paris for an editor's meeting, and um, we saw everything on television. I spoke to my secretaries that had left the building on time. And she managed to get out to Staten Island. But for me, it was a turning point because in 2001, 2002, I was working 15, 16 hours a day just to cover all the events that happened after September 11. And at that point, I said, okay, at one point, I just got to break free. Yeah, I got to leave this all behind because it's... Yeah, and then people got killed that I knew in Afghanistan. And I said, okay, I want to make a stop and do something else. So I created a little company, which is based in Abu Dhabi and in Frankfurt. And what I do, I call it, I, I'm the cleaner. I'm a corp, corporate cleaner. So if the shit hits a fan, call me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm doing, you want to have something normal? I'm out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you want to have something crazy, nuts, you don't get it. We'll, I'll bring you together with people and we'll, we'll, we'll do the turnaround. You know, we managed to do that. Okay, yeah. and and that's basically all a result of your well, uh, charisma and people skills mostly. <laughs> no, it's. I mean, I went. I have an MBA from an American business school. I have a master in economics from okay. a German business school, and I have studied philosophy and uh, history, and sports. <clears throat> But for me, it's so the way you look at things, mm -hmm. you know. And you can have an opinion that's easy, but facts are different, you know. And uh, very famous German politician, which yes. is here, yeah. Konrad Arnau, he once mm. said, nobody told me that I cannot be more smarter after I slept one night. So you can you can yeah. always change you, the way you look at things after you have slept one night and talk to other people and listen. But the ability to listen is, you know, important. And and when and when did you decide to go into creative uh into the creative field like how that how did that turn I was happen? about 12 or 13 when I started to write different things the first theater place was a, a theater piece was um, that I took from a Russian writer that uh, and I thought I would do something like that and I put it in my class and we mm -hmm. we performed it was performed about a hundred times and on in, in my school With, and I was directing, I was telling a story about a family, yeah, mm -hmm. which was derived from a, a Russian author, which I adopted to a German. And from that point on, I always wrote down my stories. And and the good thing about computers is you just have an idea, sure. you open a file, Set you it. write it down, yeah. you put it on... You know, mm -hmm. you put it somewhere, or you want to add a picture to it, you put it... Oh, you have a link on YouTube, you... Pfft, Yeah, and this is how you could. This is how the book started, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it flies by. Yeah. And when I directed Imperfecta, the film yeah. that I made was the same thing. The film developed over time while I was filming, so there were changes that were completely unexpected. And this is where, if you have, a, I mean, you know, yeah. if you have your plan and you need some having some flexibility in your brain, mm -hmm. and if that is lost, if you, you know, 
like you know we were talking about yes. it earlier the Beautiful. typical three german sentences <laughs> we've always done it this way we have never done it this way and oh shit what's going to happen you know this is <laughs> very <laughs> german sentences yes yeah so in in your approach to to like because you do a lot of comedy you do like um what inspires the the comedy like uh where um, does it come from no the when i started learning english the best way to and i used to live out of a u.s army base mm -hmm. is to look to american comedians so true yeah, yeah. jc perman and you know and the quotes and you know we didn't have t the people on tv that i mean there was comedy on germany but it wasn't really funny yeah no? yeah there was lorio was okay lorio was yeah. very good very, lorio was yeah. good Heinz Erhard. <coughs> yeah, there, yeah. There, there's but in terms of what we have today, like a comedy culture or Ricky Gervais or other people. Mm -hmm. We don't really have one, do yeah. we? Was it maybe, no, maybe, are we, we, not are we getting too old? I don't think the Germans are known for the humor. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we're known for good cars. That's true. Um, humor is, is I mean, I, I think I always look at life and you have to laugh. That's very important to me. You know, I need always to find an amusing part in, in just something. You know, we, we, we met and we started laughing. But generally speaking, we're not known for comedy. We're not known to be funny yeah. people. Yeah. Really. I'm just yeah. looking for a quote that's in my book. 97. Let me see if I find the quote. It's an American quote. But 97 is also important. Okay, I, I say it in German and trying to, to uh, you will try to translate it. Liebe ist nicht das verstummende Stöhnen einer fernen Geige. Es ist das triumphierende Zwitschern einer Bettfeder. <laughs> that, that's what that, it's, that, that, um, yeah, you, you translate that one, but that, that I, is, is great. It's, it's, and uh, you made this up. This love, is love is not, is not the, the, the death, soothing sound, no, the soothing no, no. sound of the violin. No, love is not the death throes of a violin. It's, uh, the enthusiastic squeak of a, of a new mattress. Of <laughs> a new mattress, a new bed mattress, yes. And this is from JC Perman, who is an yeah. old American comedian. Yeah. And then I grew up with George Carlin, who was a stand-up comedian in the U.S., who invented the seven bad words. So go on Wikipedia. And I know the, the bad words. Yeah, yeah these we are, all these are, know them. But these are, these are I mean, I'm a huge fan of George Carlin. Yeah. I, I yeah. think so, got, and when yeah. I lived in the States, um, uh, George Carlin was on HBO because he was free on private mm -hmm. television to say what he wanted. And there was only HBO back then who, who, yeah. wrote, who did that. Yeah. 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 So, I think Eddie Murphy was also, I think the Eddie Murphy show, the first big one. Yeah, but he was, was on also, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah, but no, yeah. but he did his, when he did his first um, solo, I mean, huge solo movie, yeah. um, um, I think that was also an HBO because you could not air it anywhere else. Yeah, he did Trading yeah. Places. Which the trading was Places is yeah. super yeah. great film. Still, so yeah. this is, and this is what I like about multi, multicultural uh, approaches. So whenever I meet my friends who have different backgrounds, mm -hmm. you know, from Israel or Arab countries or Turkey or France or Belgium, take it as an advantage that you have different cultures in you. Yeah. yeah? That's a huge, because... You can, and I mean, we are having discussions in Germany that you shouldn't adopt to certain cultures, which I think is stupid. Yeah, I would always try. When I was in the, when I lived in the States, no one ever thought I was German. And by that time, I didn't want to be German. So I was more the French guy or the Belgian guy or the, the Dutch guy, you know, and, uh, yeah. Um, which I regret by now because I'm a. But we don't, but we don't brag about the, the fact that, hey, I'm from Germany. It's like, yeah, I'm from uh, Europe. Yeah. Europe. Germans don't have like, patriotism they had said but we do but, have but, a patriotism but it's like but, but it's like silent it's a silent patriotism a bit more so. no if it comes to certain things we are very patriotic yeah like beer beer cars cars yeah football football soccer F soccer yeah, yeah. soccer yeah. blonde women um, yeah <laughs> three three world cup titles four for four world cup titles yeah. So yeah, sure. Well, um, I, I I used to have a well in my boarding school. My head, uh, my housemaster, he he would also always say, I would always say like, yeah, three yeah. world titles. Mm -hmm. Back then it was still three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, and then he would always correct me, saying, well, actually two, because back then it was like <laughs> you know, and he was like trying to. I was like, yeah, but you know, it's the same people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but we know same thing here. I never really was screaming out when I was living in Malibu in Los Angeles I was just like not uh, rarely people said oh that's this is Tim the German yeah 
Uh, so Tim, this European guy or something like that. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. worst. Or, or, or Bavarian. It's a big difference. Yeah, it's like for, for an American, if you ask them where you're from, and then they're from Texas, they say, "Where are you from?" They say, "From Texas." Then they're Americans. Yeah. First Texas, then Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So that's part of my story. I mean, um, what I always like to do is communication with people. I mean, we met yesterday first time yeah i told yeah. you some very bad jokes uh, they were, I don't know. no no they were they were fucking <laughs> hilarious they were fucking they were aces because we jokes. had to drink we <laughs> drank so much last night then but they were funny we can't yeah. no, oh they were bad ones they were really good work no but this is we're going but, strong but, tonight but, too but, like but we're if, already we, starting. if you don't do that if you don't approach other people open with open heart open arms yeah i always did in my entire life i did that i i have to say i've got had girlfriends from all over the, the world yeah and not just only germany um, or even wives so um it's you need to be you have to have an open mind yeah yeah, and yeah. if you don't have that, then it's, un then it's boring. And if you went to 10 or 11 schools or me, yeah. like, then you have to learn that because whenever you were the new guy on the, you know, on the bus, yes, yeah. yeah, either you get beaten up, you have a story to tell, or, or a joke, you, or, or you, or you make them laugh, you make them yeah. laugh, or you yeah. make them yeah. laugh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. true. Yeah. So, yeah, and I'm from, I was born in Hamburg and born raised, and uh, there's Klein Fritzchen, and we always used to tell these <laughs> these jokes yeah. that were very funny in school, and uh, yeah, we can't repeat them here because the you can absolutely yeah. can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, can, maybe you can say anything you want, and the in the wine in the what stays in the wine bag <laughs> goes straight over to YouTube. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah the, but this is the point. Maybe it's good. when we met. You know. At the moment, there's a tendency to regulate the way you talk and yeah, things. like to self censor yeah. and and I'm no, you I, can't do that. Yeah. No, I'm a, and, I, and I'm not going to gender my my language. You know, I mean, I'm I make jokes about almost everybody. If it's you know, whoever wants to be upfront in the news, we are allowed to make jokes about them. Yeah, yeah, I so, think so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, when there is ugly politicians. I don't care what kind of politicians they are. I make jokes about them. Yeah. yeah. Only because they are ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't give a shit about what they say. And we're gonna, no, actually, we actually, to. Tim, Tim told me this funny story about what you said to this lady looking for the women's literature at mm. the book oh, fair God, today. No. Yeah. It's so Which funny. Now, if you go to answer. the book fair, yeah. and, and this is my view on it. Yeah. If I go to the book fair, I see a lot of people in that I generally don't communicate with. Oh, know? yeah, yeah. Strange creature, creatures walk yeah, around that and place. Especially, I mean, I'm not so close to a, a typical German teacher. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this lady approached me and asked, where can I find um, feminine literature? And I said, oh, the cooking books are down in hall five. <laughs> and she was so <laughs> mad. But I liked it because the expression on her face gave me, you know, the whole day I was. Oh, it's, it was. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. it, it is worth it. It is worth it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But but uh, but if you have, you need to do that. And today is. I feel very sad for for uh, my son, my daughter's generation, maybe who are twenties, who are in the early twenties, because they're being told, no, you cannot do that, or you don't make a joke about yeah. that person. Or Simpsons really, it's really really important. I mean, I mean, love the Simpsons, and all of a sudden they said because. I know they, there's an Indian character in it, yeah. and he is Native in the, American. Uh, no, 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 no. He's the Indian, oh, Indian, 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 Indian from Bombay. Shaking the head uh, from Bombay. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah that kind of. Yeah. Oh, shaking for anyway. So oh, that's the so, stereotype. We have to cut it out. No, no we no, don't cut <laughs> anything out. No, but you know the sad thing is the sad thing is that I think for twenty three seasons or how many seasons that you had Apu the Indian um um uh picky mark person in there, and a great character. And somebody was offended by him now because apparently about that accent. Well, most Indian people I've met have this kind of accent, and it's not offensive at all. I don't think it's offensive. It's just it's just a very cute, fun accent. Oh, like, I'm dirty. My like, wife is dirty like, too. Like the like the French, you know, the Germans also here. Then there is, but so anyway, so Apu was cancelled, and. Um, my kids then asked, why, why, why is he canceled? I tried to explain why the reason why America canceled him. And they said, what about the German kid, the Swiss German kid, this little fat little German kid there. That always I don't think, eats chocolate. Yeah. And, and he always ate chocolate and he was always running away and he had this really um, leader who wasn't on. And I didn't feel offended by it at all, yeah? But now I think, I don't think he can be fat anymore either because you cannot have little fat Tim, kids in what, the world. What were you wearing when you were a kid? 
Me? Lederhosen. Lederhosen. Yeah. Oh, Lederhosen. Why? The entire summer. Easy. Easy. Yeah. Because they never did. Yeah, you, like, you, you're, you're not, you're not to clean them and uh, Lederhosen. That's why it worked. You But, know this joke about the Germans? When you go to the doctors, they ask you for, they need a sample of your blood and urine and sperm and what have you. Well, you know what the German says? Oh, take my old leader. <laughs> <laughs> yes, take talk. To <laughs> well, <laughs> that is true. But you know, you know what I don't understand about this whole thing. Like I, because for, for, I'm from that generation, right? I'm 26. I'm from that generation that that is crying about everything and is so super offended yeah. all the time. And I don't understand it because I started watching South Park when I was like nine years old. Yeah. Right. Like. Mm -hmm. And so did everybody from my generation. And I don't understand how anyone who w grows up watching South Park can be so offended by, like, like somebody sneezes in the wrong way and they start having a hysterical but, fit. But it is something, it, it is something about this generation that either they, they are, they're not happy about something, I don't know. It's just, it's just they're easily offended by everything. Well, everything, everything offends them, everything. everything. And that really drives me bonkers. I'm, I, Fuck you, basically. Yeah. I, why? You see, let every be, generation be like they want to be. You know, we had different generation when I grew up. When you had long hair, you were attacked by older people. Next yeah. generation is a, let everybody in any generation have the music, the books. The, sure, they should. Yeah, but don't fine. be so offended. And if they want to be offended, you will in 20 years you'll find they will hate people that get offended. Yeah, yeah. So it's older. And if you see all the left wing guys now having a bureaucratic ticket with the government, you know, don't worry about it. It's a, it's a movement. It changes. It's okay. Yeah, leave uh, every generation and yeah. Let them I, be I, I, feel like, right, I feel like yeah. it's slowly starting to change. I mean, this podcast, for example, is a yeah. good uh, example of like how the culture is starting to counter the, yeah. the narrative and and how people are starting to have a sense of humor again. Uh, and uh, because I, I feel like for the last 10 years, it's like everybody's just lost their sense of yeah. humor. It's yeah, but there's insane. a story about humor in the book, uh, which is maybe at the moment not politically correct because I live in an Arab country and the story is about... Uh, Dubai, right? Yeah, Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Yeah. Abu, oh, Abu Dhabi, okay. Yeah. And there's, they don't, there's no Arabic humor. I mean, I've been there for 20 years, but I don't find any... I mean, I haven't seen any Arabic uh, comedian, stand-up comedian. They don't that, have comedy clubs uh, over in Abu Dhabi. Probably not. So, <laughs> probably not. Huh? Yeah, you should check they, it out. They have certain things, but it's not so they funny. They fly in the Americans to do the jokes. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, exactly. They fly in Americans to do the presentation, yeah, and pay them a lot of money. And there's one chapter in there which talks about Jewish humor. Yeah, that in Germany we had a very old tradition until you know mid 30s when we then we killed them all off. Yeah, and we said no. It's yeah. not, so and with too this funny. part of our humor was yeah yeah went through the roof. And uh, but we have to work on that. Humor is important because yeah. instead of you know having 20 people around crying, it's much more fun having 20 people around all laughing about the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. true. Yeah. And, um, but still I find, you know, if I go to a movie and then uh, somebody makes a jokes and I'm the only one laughing in the, in the theater, then I know, oh God, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> it is, it, yeah it's like, true. it's like, maybe I do need help. <laughs> like, you know? Not me, but maybe the other should be more trained <laughs> on humor and, um, but it's also very important. I'm, I'm, and I'm doing it on purpose. Um, uh, I always try to misunderstand people on purpose. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. So somebody always says to me, Oh, you were in the film is they are do only porn movies. <laughs> and then it, the, the moment you know it all changes to the uh, yeah, it's like, no, only for men. <laughs> oh, <laughs> getting worse. You, yeah. like, it's like you always hit him with another punchline. <laughs> yeah. 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 uh, what do you do there? I said, Oh, I'm doing the sound in the background. Oh. Yeah. yeah? Very and, good. But this is how we can stop conversations, you know. Or, direct them into a way mm -hmm. that people do not expect. Or you'll find out pretty quickly or easily. Like yeah. the, the evening we met, you know, we hooked up. We, we, yeah. we, we spent the, for three, four hours. Uh, we were the last yeah. two guys to leave, basically. Yeah. Uh, each with a bottle of wine in our hands. And and, yeah. and and we had a great night. And you realized that in the beginning, okay. But it also, it, it's about humor. It's about, can I laugh with this guy or girl? Yeah. You know, it's it's a lot more important to find a beautiful girl. Um, no, no, not to find a beautiful girl, but it I want is. a girl, a girl who can laugh. If you have a, if your girlfriend can, if you can laugh with your girlfriend, That is fantastic. If you yeah. can't if get a you, divorce. If you meet a girl for the first time, you just yeah. say, oh, did somebody tell you today that you're very good looking? And she said, no. 
And then you say, yeah, but then you got to wait until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the way you can, yeah. you know, and the reaction of her, the reaction, you know immediately, okay, is there's a connectivity or not? Yeah. yeah. And this is easily done and it's it's not offending. It's just... No, it's not. Well, with, with a little it, twist, little humor, little yeah. smile. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, some people don't like to even do, tell you, you know, you shouldn't be flirting anymore. And it, it just drives me bonkers. That's, that, I, just, I don't care. I flirt everywhere. Because, you the know what, B, because the good thing is, at a certain age, I don't care anymore. I don't care what other weird people think. Well, you know? nowadays, nowadays, it's gotten so bad that if you hold the door open for a woman, it is some, somehow construed to be an insult to her honor. And then sometimes yeah, they get offended that. even when you do that. So it's like... I don't, uh, I don't get it. Yeah. You see, two years ago in the pandemic, the yeah. Germans were collecting toilet paper. Okay? Toilet oh. paper was a big thing. Yeah. So when I went to my supermarket and there were people fighting over toilet, I had a big discussion and uh, about, no, don't take that one. You have to see the three layers much better because you can see, <laughs> you know, and the people look at me and say, what kind of idiot is this? But I just wanted to make fun about people collecting toilet paper. Yeah, but that, the German thing was, in the pandemic, the Germans started collecting toilet paper. You know what the French did? I think they started hoarding wine. Yeah. Wine. I mean, that's, I'd rather be French than, I, than I, German. I, I love the culture difference here. We love shitting as much as they love wine. wine. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, no, that, if that I was, was going to die from the shitty virus, I'd at least I'd, I'd, rather die, I'd rather die drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd rather die drunk, you know. <laughs> yeah. but, but the German ones have a clean ass, you know. Yeah. Oh, God. But, but this is the way of, I'm trying to approach things. Yeah. You know, we yeah. have to, we, we, we yeah. need to, we have to. It's very important. And, and it's easy because there's always stereotypes that you can work with. And I love stereotypes, you know? And you know the story about the thinnest books in the world? No? No. Very thin book is Polish Scientist. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was French war heroes. <laughs> yeah. No, Italian <laughs> war heroes. Oh, yeah. Italian war heroes. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. oh, very oh, thin God. book is also Italian cuisine. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, English oh my God. cuisine. If English we have cuisine. one Italian English. viewer, he's going to yeah. go rage oh, on the oh, comments. Oh, by the way, you know the thinnest Jewish book is? Jewish business ethics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, true. if you go on with that one, and that makes people, I mean, that is funny. That is yeah. funny stuff. And you can, but everybody because, has something to relate with. It's you because, know? because every stereotype, and this is why they exist, they have a grain of proof in them. Of they're, they're exaggerated versions of the truth that are sort of like funny. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, and we, we find them funny and they are stereotypes because they are true. In some ways, yeah. and you need to address the. If you, if you don't do that, then we're gonna be. There's certain parties when you go to the party, you see some person sitting in the corner or standing in the corner and not, not surrounded by any other fun people or anyone. He's just sitting there alone, or she's standing there alone, and you go, "What what's wrong with her?" Or something. I don't know. Is he an accountant or is it a really bad hair day? Something went happened. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't have that. Yeah. But there's a line to this. What? Go ugly early, then beat the rush. <laughs> <laughs> Give the man more wine. Okay. Oh, oh by the way. Hey. Yeah. Please. Serving cheers. you yeah, in cheers. the wine bank, wine lounge. Yeah. Right thank you for joining us here in yeah. Los Berlin. It's, no, it's, this is, it's this is a, this is a nice rosé from, was it Portugal? She said no. Barcelona. 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 From Barcelona. And there's a Frankfurt story to Barcelona. Because when Frankfurt played in Barcelona, all the Frankfurt junkies like me went to Barcelona. So we had... We approached Barcelona with 40,000 people. The last time we, we took 40,000 people abroad, and we marched into Poland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And I remember, how, but how did you guys get then, because I saw that in the news, obviously. Yeah. Um, um, how did you guys get the tickets? How did you guys just... Oh, there's, uh, first of all, I came back from Abu Dhabi that day. Yeah. And I called a couple of my friends. Nobody was there. I said, no, I can't. I have to go to Barcelona. I said, Jesus Christ, how do I get to us? So I called my travel agent. I said, oh, you want to go to, it's easy. You fly to Warsaw, then you take a flight from Warsaw to Sevilla and then the bus to Barcelona. Mm -hmm. He said, no, I want to go to Barcelona. I said, no, no. What about train ticket? No train ticket. I said, shit. And at nine o'clock in the evening, a friend of mine called me and said, Marcus, I'm driving down to Barcelona, which is 1,400 kilometers. It's okay. He said, are you nuts? He said, no, no. I have a big, you know, limo, yeah. six-seater. I have five players. I have one spare you want to join us i said i'll join you when do we leave he said tomorrow morning at 6 30. so look and watch i sat down put all the emails to my business and said i'm sick i can't come you know mm -hmm. so was six germans sitting in a car going to barcelona none of them had a ticket oh two people had a place <laughs> to sleep yep 
Hi. Perfect. Hi. Hi. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. And then we in the car, we were all on the mobile phones trying to find booking.com. T- no, first of all, place to stay. We came to Barcelona. I had a ticket because I'm an old journalist, so I had a press ticket that mm-hmm. I could, which was expensive. But anyway, I got one. And then we went to the receptionist, and the receptionist could, under her Spanish name, book tickets on her name ah, yeah, with her sure. visa card, Spanish visa card, mm-hmm. and she sold it to the guys. So we sure. had all tickets. We had, I had a great room. It was like eight square meters. Uh, the shower was always half in the bed. Mm-hmm. No windows. Yeah, and uh, yeah, but who cares for football? I would do everything. Yeah, yeah. of course and you then would. Of course you would. We went to the stadium, and which is a big stadium. Camp Nou has about eighty. 90,000 people. Like, yeah, 90,000. And half of them were from France. Nice. That, that, and, and, the, and the Spanish, um, I think the, the Spanish um, moderators or commentators, they, they were really freaking out. There's way too many. To, uh, I think your, your shirt is, isn't your color black at the end? Is it, do you have a black? No, no we it, all uh, wear red. white shirts. Well, white shirts. Okay, yeah. I just said, okay. Yeah, yeah. And the whole thing was white. We it was white. Our song. Yes, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Im Herzen von Europa. <laughs> That's fantastic. In the heart of Europe. Yeah. Tell us, tell us, tell us, what is your next plan? What is your next... Um... Okay, there's three things I'm uh, doing at the moment. One is I finished the script for a short film that I want to do as soon as I have the time, which is called Cry Me or a Crime. Mm-hmm. And it's a short film about uh, the digitalization of crime investigation in a very compressed way. It's going to be probably three minutes. Yeah. Good. And uh, I've written the book. Um, I'm just working with my cameraman on the timing and the budget and everything. And I hope to be out with it sometime first quarter next year. Yeah. Just talking to my musicians about what kind of music I need for that. Maybe some hip hop, maybe some, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Maybe some Johann Sebastian Bach Goldberg variation. Well, we'll see. Well, we'll find out. The... So it's in the creative process. Um, Second thing is, um, my pa- father passed away uh, not so long ago, and I'm probably gonna s- write some of our family stories that I wasn't supposed to write before he died. No, I'm free. No, you're free. Yeah, you can do now it. I can yeah. tell all the bad things about my family. No, not bad things, but maybe things that that other people don't want to read about themselves. Exciting yeah. things. <laughs> okay. Exciting. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure they're exciting saying, stories yeah. or no unusual I'd, stories. Unusual stories. You see what? Yeah. Ah, very yeah. good. Unusual stories. Yeah. Um, and then the coffee machine is really loud here. Yeah. No, the um, and then I'm t- trying to do. Um, I'm writing a script, and you know the script. Yeah, that's great script. Yeah, uh, and uh, which is a um, 90 minutes love story, which I want to finish the book in a way that it's adapted to today. I think it has a, a, some tweaks in it that I want to change. Uh, that's going to take a couple of months because I'm just putting it away, putting it out. And But sometimes I need a day or two where I have nothing else to do. I sit down in a in a wine bar in, in Palma de Mallorca having exactly. good rosé. And it's going to be a very good one. It's called Bar Rosé. Bar Rosé. Bar Rosé. Yeah, bar in Palma de Mallorca. So it's coming up. It's yes. not there yeah, yet, I but heard, it's coming I up. I heard about it too, yeah. Yeah, there were. Yeah. And I heard rumors earlier before at the other yeah. table. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, and this is where I s- sit down and, and I finish yeah. it. But... but the nice thing is that it's not one project you're doing because it's exactly what it's what I told you or tell other writers. You need to, you, I, I at least, I have about six or seven, eight, five, whatever. I have I have different projects at different stages. And where if I maybe I don't get, uh, maybe I'm not too excited about one stage and one, I can move to the other one. Yeah. And um, I need to do that because it's I cannot always sell one story. Maybe then I have another story that I can sell. Yeah. And... That's what we have to do. I, I think I'm we completely people. different. Like whenever I'm on, for example, I'm writing this pirate uh, fantasy story right now. I'm, it's the only like I don't do anything else until this is finished. No. Like, I it's have good to, for you. Good for but you. But you can it's do different that. with novels because they take. Yeah, like, I have a different ages. approach. The only thing where I stick to one thing is my my girlfriend. The other things are very. <laughs> I'm very flexible. No, I'm. I'm your girlfriend is flexible, you said? No, the, you're yeah, flexible. No, my, my, that too. my girlfriend is a belly dancer, so I mean... Yeah. You, you know, girlfriend's not a belly dancer, you yeah. dick. Really? And she's French. You have oh. a French belly dancer as a girlfriend? Okay. They're yeah, running out of time. It's been really <laughs> nice, you know. Yes. A uh, French belly dancer. And her name is Cecilia. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, thank Rub. you all so much for watching Lost in Berlin. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss an off the club episode. Yeah.
And until then, we'll see you in the next episode. I have a strong feeling that we will have you as another guest at some other time. I think so. Yeah, I'm there so. exclusively for in, you. In Palma. In Palma. In, at Palma. The, in Palma at the Bar Rosé. Bar Rosé in Palma. Yeah, okay, that good. sounds good. It's a plan. It's a plan. Thank <laughs> okay, you very nice. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers, Cheers, my dear. Kriegst du geile Typen her? Doch das Leben ist nicht schwer. Ich schwör auf Eierlikör.